right. Hello. This is Big Dave reporting live for Charles News Network. Today, we have our good friend from the UE, Austin Donut, who is one of the many candidates running in the UE Chancellor. Uh, Austin, you want to introduce yourself to the camera? Yes, I will, Dave. Um, so I'm Austin Donut, leader and founder of Donut Empire, and also co-founder of the United Empire UE. All right. Um, I want to thank Dave here for uh, recording this and also um, ho uh, hosting the interview because I want to. I feel like I didn't get my interview out like I did when I did an interview on UE News. So hopefully this will be a little bit better. Hopefully. So you can ask the questions whenever you want. All right. First question, Austin Donut. How long yes. have you been a part of the UE, and what has driven your goals and or aspirations thus far? Well, I've basically been, a, I've been around since the very founding of the UE. Mm -hmm. And, well, to speak on behalf of my uh, vice chancellor candidate, Tui Manoke, he was around during the – also he was also around during the founding because – of, of the UE. So he's been around just as long as, basically just as long as I have. And he's also been the very first Don Empire member. He's been around the longest, but he was around during the UDK era. He's been around for a very long time. And I'm the, basically the same. And what has driven me to run for you, Chad, is because it's something that I, me and Katze created, something that I feel like I created something pretty great. And I feel like I'm the best candidate to do it because I have the experience. I've been on the I'm on the council. I know, and practically everyone in the whole world, Charles and P, uh, would consider me being the uh, UE chancellor. Uh, well, not UE chancellor, but being a leader. Basically, I've been called the leader of UE by. I, I joined a call and people were like, it "Was are you so you're leader of UE?" I'm like, "No." I'm, so you see, I'm already been realized as the leader so why not elect me i've proven that i can do things mm -hmm. i in fact i built most of this building that we're in right now the chancellor building and i'm pretty proud of that actually i will thank a lot of people that were able to actually help me build this wonderful building that you're standing in right now and i've been able to unite the ue to build great builds such as you see here and the united mountain city was also my idea i've done a lot for the ue and so I think it only makes sense to vote for someone who's been around the most, practically founded it, and the one who has built great structures and has done the most for the UB. All right. <laughs> that was a very, very loaded response. Very good response. Very loaded. Um, I think you may have actually answered a bunch of my follow-up questions. Uh, so, next question I have for you. What slogan yeah. or phrase do you have for your campaign, if any? So I have two of them. So basically I have one. We are keeping things in UE control or United Empire control, if you want to say it that way. The other one is uh, we, ain't, we aren't no strangers to the UE or we know UE because we've been around since the very beginning. So me and Tui would know UE, right? We ain't no strangers to the UE. We aren't some new person like, say, Grievous Mouse. So we know what we're talking about here. You know, we've been around, and, and not not just uh, not just me, but Tui as well. He's been around pretty much as long as I have, almost on the server, really. Of course, I was around before him, but he's just been around for so long, just like I have. So I thought he's an active. He he's good at building. He may, he does. We work great as a team. So that's why I chose him as my vice chancellor candidate. But uh, you go ahead and ask more questions as well, right. Dave. So um, you might have answered this um, in the first question, but uh, what do you have in this race that other candidates don't have? And why should that make people vote for you? So if you want to reiterate that that point yeah. you made earlier. So so pretty much, I mean, the, the biggest thing that's against my other, my, my other candidates um, – specifically mouse is the fact that he doesn't have the experience needed and people haven't seen what he can do yet and me i have been around for well, i mean like i said i've been around longer i i've me and tui have and so 
what I'm reiterating, I'm basically saying that we have been around the longest. Why not vote for someone who's been around longer and who's been there for the UE since the beginning during the third spawn? In fact, if anyone who argues that I'm not like that, this is the argument that people use. They'll use that. You know, I'm always this peace person. I always don't want to get in the wars. In fact, I know when to get in wars. In fact, I was me and Kat say I got into the third spawn war event. And sure, maybe we didn't do the best at it. It proves that I'm willing to fight for the UE if needed. And I know when to I know when to, you know, take action for things. That's something that people don't think. I know when to take action when it's needed. So pretty much vote for vote for someone that has experience. Vote for someone that knows the UE best, fat practically founded it. And that's what I would say to the voters who are still haven't voted for us or unsure. Vote for someone who has experience. I wanna ha I'm gonna have ways for people like Mouse to get experience. Mm -hmm. So well, that's what I would say. Yeah. Very good, very good. So vote for someone who has experience. I I'd agree. Very good. Um You've definitely already touched on this, but uh, just to dissect things a little bit more, what achievements have you made in the UE, if any, and what have been the lasting implications of those actions thus far? So you're, ask, you're asking what I've done for the UE so far? Yeah. What, what big achievements stand out? Well, for one, uh, this building is actually really, I'm really proud of this building. And this building is probably my favorite building in the whole city and er everything. I, I built a beautiful structure at Donut Empire, Fort Donut. But this place is frail as a comparison to where it is. I mean, this, first, first of all, it's larger. I don't know if you've been to Donut Empire, but it's not very big. This place is very large uh, and it's very grand looking too. I, and I, I can't take all the credit here. But I did fleet, did a lot of the building. I had a, my good friend, uh, well, some member as well, Samuka. He's uh, he helped build me uh, this structure as well. He also he built some of these little leaves, you know, little plants you see here. I made a little desk. I made this little area for you know some chest room, chest rooms here, you know, chest storage. And I can't take all the credit, but I did a good amount of help, and I helped organize it. So essentially, um, I organized this and. That's one of my achievements. Now, the other achievement is creating the UE in the first place. You know, I would have never thought that I would come to this because if you go back in, if you go back in time, really everyone. I feel this, this applies to everyone. Anyone who joins Charles, Spade, they usually there's a, they have this. There's just this nature for people that want to uh, that that want to take over the server essentially, right? There's, there's just that power hungry nature that everyone has oh, for yeah. some reason when they go. They want to be, they want to be the best. Out of any fact, they see, they see Lopez, they see Charles, they want to be better. So, I kind of had that nature myself, but not as I didn't really want to show that really. But Katze, the minute the UE, Katze completely changed my point of view on the UE. Uh, he, he, played, he played changed my point of view on things. Um, I decided, well, you know, I'm not going to take over Katze. I'm going to work together with him. I realized that unity was better. Than taking things by force. So me and Katze, that on that one day at the uh, Katz Empire in this little house, right, it's a very humble place, and I we came up with the idea of the UE, and I wasn't for sure. I wasn't sure of it at first. I mean, and everyone who's still unsure about the UE as a whole, I wasn't sure about it myself being the co-founder. But looking back, it was probably the greatest decision ever made, and really, it was basically fate because to think about it. If, th if just these things wouldn't have lined correctly, this wouldn't have even this wouldn't have even happened. So I mean, it, it's just how it just happened. And really, it could have meant anything. It's like, say I didn't message cats, say I didn't do this. I mean, it could UE would never existed. It's really incredible to think about. That's one of my great achievements. The creating the UE is one of my other great achievements. Yeah, that's that's. Important. And other achievements, other achievements are like you know maybe the little things. I was there for the UE during. Written the arsonist attack and all that. Sure, I didn't say stop him, but I kind of was the one who helped keep people together. They or I organized people to come together and to help figure out what was going on. We ended up coming to the conclusion together. Now he keeps saying it was me, but we came to the conclusion that it was could be that the evidence points to Alaster, and that's why we chose him. 
as you know the suspect. Now, by the way, he didn't even put up a defense, but that's not what we're here to talk about him. That's a whole rant, its own right. But other things I've done, for example, like, well, I mean, I built I built Don Empire, the city, right? That's something I built before here. Really, I, I would add this: I care about the UE so much that I basically dedicated this whole my whole faction to this essentially because i really haven't done much as far as you know, independently as doing empire yeah and another thing um I, I built i built a few farms i built like a skeleton farm i built like the famous well not really famous but it's you've seen some pictures if you look at some old pictures you'll see the you know the farm we have that goes down that main strip actually i built most of the roads that's another accomplishment the roads the roads is pretty cool um that ties everything together I helped. I really came with a lot of the ideas in the UE. For example, the United Man City was my idea. That's another great. Actually, that's another great achievement I've made myself. The the United Mountain City itself and the walls. We have probably one of the tallest walls. I don't know, if, almost ever. Uh, I don't. I don't know if anyone else has taller walls than we do, but we have probably some very large walls, and those took me quite a while to do, but. I did it. I love a cast at all. And actually, I've been called by people outside the UE. They said they say they even called our walls very overpowered. Like, they just thought that our walls were really nice. That's another great achievement. I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just proud of what we've achieved over these, I'd say, you know, four to five months of the UE existing. We've done so much as a community, as a nation. And I hope that I can better forward the UE to, uh, even more you know, from what we've done now. And I have new plans of doing that, you know. I'll touch on those more in my rally, but, you know, I haven't really put out my whole thing campaign yet, so I'll touch on those more. But to answer your question, I've done many great things. This is the wall, the building you're standing in, the United Mountain City, and a lot of the ideas in lawmaking. Practically, all the books that those you see, all those books were written by me. Sure, the council passed them, but I'm the one who wrote them. Uh, yeah. You know what's? It's a sad reality. It's a sad reality, Dave. Hardly anyone in the UE, other than me, has came up with any ideas. Sure, you could argue almost a cat did, but like, hardly anyone really came up with a say. Hey, this is my ideas I have. You want to pass through a vote? It's always been me doing it, you know. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's kind of odd. But that's what I'd say. I've done basically everything. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would argue. That's what I would say. Those are my great achievements. Yeah, that's it's wonderful. It's a a very, very long list that people should uh, pay great attention to. So, um, oh, real quick, do you think you could uh, change your skin? Your, your skin is a random thing right now. Just, just real quick. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, it's supposed to be my new skin that I made. Oh. Custom. Uh, is do you have do you have uh trusted skins turned off? Yeah, I, I have. Remember, I, remember, I couldn't see your skin I've, that I've one time. I have trust skins turned off. Hmm. Maybe, I, maybe, see, maybe if I try resetting it or something. Yeah, just change your. Skin. I don't really have. Just, just change. I don't it. really have. See, let me see if I can go like this. Maybe this may work. Cause I think I refreshed it here. Did that work? It's supposed to be me. It's supposed to be my skin, but in a suit. Just, it's supposed to be. Change your skin to something else. I just used one of the, the base template ones. The base ones. Yeah. Like well, I have I have my I have my uh oh, just I have my char character creator skin. Yeah, do, uh, do that one then. One. This is this is what it looks like. I like I really like this one. You look the one. suit. <laughs> All right. Uh you have any more questions, yeah. uh Dave? Yeah, I got I got quite a few. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so, what problems would you address within the UE's current state, if any, and how would you solve those issues? So, as as an example, people outside the UE may be making claims or accusations such as um, corruption within the UE, things like that, or anyone within the UE that would call you a corrupt leader or an individual in general. How would you address those claims? And issues, and what issues do you have yourself with the current state of the UE? Well, my current the, the current problems I see in the UE right now are, for one, like you you briefly mentioned, 
the UE, uh, hey, which I call it, basically I've called it that, but it could be called, it, it could boil down to even rumors, but I've noticed, I, I caught chats from people, leaders, like such as Luke from Lopat, saying things like, UE can be diabolical, UE is corrupt, you know, that's how I, I got the whole UE corrupt thing, and that's that's something a bit concerning, especially from a, a larger faction, right? You know, and so I like to I like to to fix that. And my way to fix that would be to have meetings. I feel like we don't we don't talk to the other leaders enough. We we stay in our own little zone, if you will. We stay within these walls and we don't leave. In fact, I've I'm guilty of that I've left. I've stayed in this wall. I haven't really gone out much and actually talked to other people. And that's. That could be play a part. We don't get enough. We don't get out there enough. To people actually hear from the real us. They only hear what people tell us. Tell about the UE. I'm sure, most of it's good, but I mean, that is, there's still room for for those rumors, fake and even lies, perhaps. So that's why we have to get out there. I like to have meetings with. See, the fix the thing with Lopat. I would just have a meeting with Lopat and just talk with him about it, and um, and then I would do the same with probably other factions that have that have the same. Maybe even CFA. I think CFA would be a good option too because. They're also one of the larger factions, and maybe even a little smaller factions as well. Another thing, I don't know if you noticed this, but we've lost factions like Mistonia, and that's that's a loss for the UE. We lost a great PvP-orientated faction, and that's not really good for us. So essentially what I did was, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do what i always done, recruit more people. I'm going to... Fat Having meetings or a fashion is a good chance to bring up the opportunity. Hey, so, hey, you know, would you be interested in joining us? You know, that's a good opportunity to do it instead of just asking, right? You know, want to join UE? So that's a perfect opportunity. That's probably what I'll do instead of just doing it like I normally do and just, you know, ask them. But you, if, it'd be better to actually have a meeting and then bring it up. It, it makes more sense. Um, and then I would probably, the other issues like, um, there's probably some minor issues like theft. Really, there's not much we really can do, but I actually do have a way to fix that, though. My solution to theft is, well, for one, lock your chests. Don't keep them out in the open. That's basically common sense. You'd be surprised when people don't listen to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I would do is I'm going to have certain cities. So say I recruit someone in the UE. They uh, basically will – they usually will join me. And I'll ba- they'll basically want to come to the city wherever I am, right? Makes sense. So I'll basically have a city. This is, this is separate from the second one. This would be basically a third city, I guess. It would be a city dedicated to new people in the UE that didn't want to go say, – say they didn't want to go to their own faction cities because really that they could do that, but most people don't. This would be a way for them to come to a city where they can still be in a UE city, but yet they will also – they won't be at our direct city here because I feel like you know, it stops things like the arsonist attack – it stops things like the um, theft, like I was mentioning, and just all kind of other problems that happens with that. Um, so you fix it, and it's going to be really cool. I mean, I'll probably have a governor over that. Um, you know, something my my uh, political opponent, Furious Mouse, brings up is the fact that there's no way to get up in power in the UE. And I realize that, but the chancellor positions also going to allow people to do that as well. I think that the whole piece of Mouse is able to do that. But I took what he said a bit to heart, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to provide a, little, a new position where I'll work with the council on this as well. A new position that where the people of the UE will be able, even normal citizens and anyone really, they could run for a governor position, which means they'll be a governor. See, the chancellor can't do everything, running all these cities. You know, eventually we'll have too many cities for the chancellor to be able to be there. They can't be at all places at all times. So essentially, this uh, will be a way for. People to get power, but not have to be, um, not have to be the chancellor per se. Uh, I also get feel that chance to get. I really, I feel like you have a better chance of winning if you ran for governor and one governor, and then try to run for chancellor. You've already got, you've already shown your experience. It's going to help you. It's, gonna, it's just all you've already got your resume pulled out. You've already been a governor. You can, you showed that you can run a city. The governors will basically work with the chancellor, just like anything else. They'll, they'll work with the chancellor. Not really. They won't have as much power, right? They'll just only be. They'll only be have governance over that city, right? So they'll only have governance over that city if they're directed over. So, for example, that city I was telling you about, the one with the new members. Maybe he'll just make sure things are going well there. But pretty much, the people can kind of 
it's not necessarily people, the, the new people can like build whatever they want, really. But we'll try to bring some order. But it's going to be kind of a thing where we don't have to really worry about, hey, we're not going to get our items stolen. It's not it's not as big of a deal if we lose things over there, right? It's something they make. So it won't be as big of a deal. Problem with this city, if so we bring new people in here, it's always a risk. They could steal. They could greet. They could even blow everything up. That would be horrible. Um, in fact, if, if we, we're we lucky we haven't got bombed uh, from that, and that would be, that'd be crazy. Um, another problem is that I like to bring up would be things like active member count. Our active member count has been dropping recently. I mean, people may, I've even heard people say like the UE is kind of inactive, you know, the UE is, the UE is kind of dropping its, the active member counts dropping. That's why we got to get new people in. And I'm probably the best person to do that because I've basically got everyone. This is a very sad reality here, Dave. Half of the people, like all factions in the UE, Don't Empire is the largest faction in the UE with the biggest member count. What does that tell you? It tells you the other factions must not be doing something right. Right, um, and that's pretty bad. So what I've done is, I've tried offering that they usually always join me. They never join the other factions. Like when I, even if I offer them to join, so pretty much I, pretty much I always, um, pretty much I always try to recruit people. Uh, I try to recruit people the other factions, but they don't always doesn't always work. Right, so they usually join me. That's not my def- I don't know if there's going to be a fix that for say. I just have to encourage our members, the other UE leaders, to actually recruit for themselves. I you know, something yeah. that incentivizes the activity in other yeah. factions is uh, having them feel like they're good at something. Like, like yeah. the Donut Empire, for example. Like you're the biggest in the UE. Like you specialize in just being being the biggest. You have the most activity going on. That's your claim to fame. And, and mainly things. building. Well, yeah. Many focus on building. Yeah, yeah but like I think, Bankers I think, did. I think having other factions that feel important in the UE's infrastructure would be a good place to start. Like you guys, especially yeah, find be. something that they're good at, and that'll allow for more growth and more activity, and more of a sense of belonging in the ue well we actually had that something like that day we had miss stonia miss stonia was a very pvp based fashion we, we always considered if you're a if you like pvp that's the faction to join in the ue and even oro was also head to head with that but now since we lost miss stonia we don't have a pvp faction anymore um and there's just not that many factions that are pvp oriented and just have these certain that. jobs they, they you know that. um I know, I know why they don't last because they get if there's bored. no wars, there's no wars, they get bored, like you said. Yeah. It's like the that's the problem. Old. Um, actually, I, that's, that brings down another thing, Dave. I heard someone say, like, the UE is a big target for Cavaliers. I was like, hmm, that, I mean, that's an interesting point. I mean, we've had many people like, uh, what, Zayner, Siam, Byron, Siam, Siam Marine, I don't, no one really talks about this, but Siam Marine literally massacred people, and we did nothing about it. Um, we, we tried to get him, we couldn't catch him though, because you know where he went. But um, we don't talk about we don't talk about all the bad things we've happened to us, and we've done nothing about it. And that's a lot of times that people. I want us to be more what I call self sustainable. It means that we don't have to rely on our factions anymore. We can do it ourselves. We can say, hey, you know, if someone messes with us, we can go to war and we can be confident that we'll win and that we won't end up destroying ourselves. Because essentially, that's how we are now, and that's not a good thing for any faction. And so. My way of doing this is having certain days we do certain tasks. So, like a building day, we have a uh, site. I mean, it could even be event day, PvP day. You know, it really depends. But we also could have things like um, we could also have things like um, well, we have we have building for once. Oh. Uh, well, serve this here, but yeah, it's at nine o'clock, so that's why I did that. But we have, like I said, a day. Actually, I forgot to mention villager trading. That's another thing I want to mention. Villager trading, that's actually going to be our biggest asset. I actually want to be able to stock, I'm going to start stockpiling gear for active, not, I will say active members of the UE because we're not giving stuff to new people who we don't know if are going to stick around or not. And really, even active ones could. They could be active for a little bit and then leave. But there's a chance you always take, right? But I want to give people that I think are active Good gear and stuff, and maybe start to re-summon the black, rebuild the black widow guard. That 
it has potential. It just uh, really died out, unfortunately, because of how many the people just didn't last, right? The people that always joined always didn't last. You know, last was probably the best guard we had, and he turned out being a criminal, I guess. Uh, he also didn't have a really good ass. So he kind of showed his true colors really after that. Mm-hmm. And Dave, didn't you didn't you say didn't you ask me like what are some of the things like people accusations people are using it? That's something I would like to touch on too. I've been called by people like almost a cat, a control freak. And that's something that I like to touch on myself. Well, let me tell you something. How many people, how many UE leaders other than me have actually took, taken action when, when things were needed? Remember, we can't always rely, we can't always rely on a council vote. It takes time. We can't always rely. We need to, like I said, that's the final reason we got the chancellor. Someone can do things on behalf of us. But well, the council still remains in control, right? Um, who, who has been the person who has mainly done things? It's been me. To say I'm a control freak is basically saying that, well, I'm doing this because no one else will. Um, how many other you leaders have taken action? It's always been me. Um, you can name many times. I've done all the four relations stuff. Somewhat, the people who call me a control freak, I'd say that's nonsense because what have the other you leaders done? If they did a lot, you would be probably calling them that, too. So that's what I would say. I'm not trying. It was never about control for me. It was always about what was what was the best for the you people. And really where that probably came from is the most controversial statement I think I ever made was the statement I said. I, taught, I essentially banned meme from the United Mountain City, right, because of the whole war going on. Because people – Easton kept thinking that they were – a part of that that, it, that uh, we were still had something to do with them. I didn't want the war to break out with us. You know, I didn't want UE to get involved in that silly war. So I thought, well, we got to get we got to show them that meme is no on part. So we basically we basically ban. I basically kind of banned him here temporarily. He's he's allowed to come back in now, but he's not allowed. To, he's not allowed to come. He's he wasn't allowed to come in at that time. So essentially, I did that not as a act of power but just to sh- just to keep us safe because we were getting th- we were getting threats from war from the C- from the lord of the cfa easton at the time um and so you can only think imagine if you're getting that any it, i did what any rational person would do i i do any rational person i uh, would do i would uh try to stop it and the reason it was so controversial is because people thought you know it was active power you know you're kicking miss Darnians out Stuff like that, and then people would say things like, um, like you, "You didn't ask the council. You didn't ask the council." And I, w- and I was like, uh, "Well, I, uh, you guys weren't doing anything. I was bringing this up to you guys. You just didn't really do anything about it. I, if I didn't, forgive me, because sometimes I maybe I don't. But that's why this chance thing. It's kind of a requirement to be really open with the council and things like providing daily reports and stuff like that. And that's." That's something else that the Chancellor will do, and I think that's – Chancellor's going to benefit the UE a lot if it's done right. Mm-hmm. And what I, what I would say to my other candidates well, – you may be asking that a question soon, but what I would say to my other candidates is probably um, – for example, let's say Gala Cassidy with Gala's dropping out, but I don't know if – it's unknown where Cassidy is. I'm just going to say Cassidy is running. But Cassidy, he's an active – sure, Cassidy, you made the – you really made the UE. Practically, with your was your idea. However, you haven't physically done much. Uh, you've built, you know, a little bit of cats. In fact, you built, you may build your own things. Really, you, you built, you built a nice little brick farm for us. Hey, that's nice. But what has the Catsay Empire, or well, actually, his brother Mechanical has done more than he has actually. But what has Catsay himself done physically? Not much physically. As far as Discord, why he's been pretty active, decently active on Discord, and he'll he you can talk to him, he'll tell you, gives you advice. That's that's great. But physically on the server, his presence hasn't been known, so, and so uh, I would argue he's been active. So as a follow up to that, then, um, yeah, are there any other candidates that you would refer the individuals that don't wish to vote for you as chancellor to? So what you, what exactly are you asking? So, like what I what I would say to people who are voting for someone so else, if not people me. don't want to vote for you, or the people yeah. you've listed, who would you say is the best next runner up as a candidate in this chancellor election? Who would you endorse personally? Who who would I endorse? Yes, if you could say anything nice well, about the other candidates, 
I, yeah, but there's something I can bet. I would, I would, I would endorse Grievous Mouse for UE Chancellor if I was a runner, because he's probably the best one we have right now. Um, he's inexperienced, but if I win, he'll have a, he could have a chance. I think he has a good chance of winning governor position, and he could be governor of the second UE city. Give him, give himself an experience. People can know, people can know that he. Um, they can see that he has experience. That's who I would endorse. I would endorse Grimmouse because he's probably the best candidate we have. He's act. He's decently active. He has some good ideas, really good ideas. And I would just say that if I wasn't running, me and Tui, I would endorse Grievous Mouse and I would vote Mouse because Grievous Mouse is probably one of the best candidates other than me. So that's why I think it's going to be a little bit. T- I don't know if it'll be a tight race or not, but I do think that if Mouse loses this, don't be discouraged, Mouse, because. I'm pretty sure that eventually I won't be able to keep winning. You know, sooner or later, you know, people will get tired of the same candidate. They're going to vote someone else. And I think if I was going to be that, I'd rather Mouse win. And really, Mouse would bench drive himself. But I would hope that Grievous Mouse uh, would not dis- dis- get discouraged by this and would keep going because he really has great ideas. He has potential. I think I can see him. I can see him for a UE governor position. If anything. And that's what I would say right now. You be governor, Mouse. That's what you should be going off to. And so that's one thing I'll say. As far as Katsay goes, um, well, I would say Katsay, start being active again, physically. You do that, people will start people will start feeling like you're more part of the UE again. You're just too distant. Now, as far as anyone else, because I'm pretty you're asking anyone else who wasn't running, right? Well, I can't really think of anyone else that isn't running that I would endorse. Let's see. I would think maybe someone like, well, I can't really, I can't really think of any other any other people who really would be good that aren't running right now. I really, I wouldn't think Pity Minor would be a good one. He was supposed to run. He ended up not doing it. Um, we have inactive people like Cookie Cat. You know, she she made a she may be a good. I don't think she would want the power though. So I'm not sure. That's why I said if I was anyone, it's got to be Mouse. That's all I'd say. Perfect. I would endorse Mouse. So, um, I think you've answered just about everything else that I would have said and any other yeah. questions because you do have some, some very, uh, some, some very lengthy responses that go over a lot of, a lot of things. So, it's a yeah. Um, I think that concludes all my questions that I have answered everything. Uh, Dave, I do have a question. Could you, uh, wait, is Ma- you know if Mouse is in the call right now? Uh, let me check real quick. Because he, he said he wants to do an interview with you, so you can interview him. You go ahead and interview him while you're, while we're right here. I could, that could do him next, but I should do a separate recording, so it's not... Yeah, yeah you, you could do a separate, just do a separate Mouse says, yeah. Okay, I just wanna I just wanna wrap this up then. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Wanna, uh, come on over here. Um, I, you want me to, you want me to make a closing statement or something? Yeah, cl- closing statement. That's so. Well, I want I just want I just want to thank uh, Dave here, the Charles uh, News Network, for hosting this interview, and I want to say to uh, to those who are voting in the UE, and also people who just aren't in the UE, because there'll be some people who aren't in the UE watching this. The UE is not evil. We're not here to hurt you. And and we're just trying to find our way. And please, we please hope that you bear with us as we get, as we're still developing, and we're still figuring. Even to this day, we're still figuring out hey, what exactly we are. Hey, you kind of cut out, kind of cut it out there for me. Uh, oh, can you repeat what you said like ten seconds ago? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. It does that. I don't have a good like microphone. It's just my phone. So no, that's that that. my bad entirely. I disconnected from the call for a second. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go back. Um, so essentially, I would say anyone who is in the UE, I would say here's my message to you. Um, watch the me watch the debates. Listen to what the people. Don't just take what the rumors that you hear. Actually, watch. You know, be involved in the UE. I know we don't. A public invite for obvious reasons, but I would these things like this allows you to actually understand the UE a bit more. I would argue, I would I would say that you should watch some of these and just 
don't don't listen to rumors. Actually, talk to us and see what we really believe. Because there's a lot of false information out there about us, and we're not we're not evil. In fact, um, I'll bring up uh, Jace. He did a Charles uh, News Network thing, and he mentioned mentioned the UE in it. So, and he, and he said it was a great faction. So I don't know where this yeah. hate has come from, but my all I'd say is say, uh, all I'd say is well, you want you want you go ahead. You can say. Me personally, I I endorse UE. I endorse Austin yeah. Donut. Make UE great again. Vote Austin Donut. Yeah. I I would do that, but it just it, it copies it copies Trump's slogan. So um, I was just I was just I was just kidding. Yo. I know. Um. So yeah, what I would say is anyone if you're UE if you're not from UE just keep turning in. It's going to be very interesting to see this go down. And um, I also watch watch. Listen to Mouse because I know he's he's my competitor, but I would definitely listen to what he has to say because he definitely could be very good as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and uh, thank you, Dave, for hosting yep. this interview.